Hi, my name is Carla Horton and I've been a member of this church for nine years now. It all started again when I when I joined this church and we were doing the young adult Bible study visioneering and I kind of was just at a point in my life where I had been a hot mess and I was just had reached a point where I was like okay God what do you want me to do what is my purpose here and so um, I wasn't it wasn't a very fancy prayer it was just use me Lord guide me Lord lead me Lord I, I'm lost here and I really don't know why I'm hearing what I'm supposed to be doing and so, as God's timing is, it took a while for him to answer. And it happened in a, a very amazing way that I, I, couldn't, I couldn't even make it up if I tried. I was at a conference, and it was during praise and worship. And literally, it, as loud as it could be, because God knows that I'm hard-headed, and he said it as loud as can be, and I heard him say, Child, you need to open your Bible. And I opened it up to Psalm 81.10, and it said, For I am the Lord your God who brought you up out of Egypt. Open your mouth wide, and I will fill it. And I laughed when I read it, and he said, this is, not, this is not a joke. I gave you that big old mouth of yours that you've been made fun of your whole life for. I gave you that loud, outgoing personality for a reason. And you are going to use that mouth, and you're going to teach my word. And I, I, I was basically in shock. And at this point, I had just started Bible study, like, in my entire life, like I knew where Genesis and Revelation was. That was about it. The rest of it, I was using the table of contents. And I said, you, I must be making this up because there's no way that someone who doesn't know the Bible is going to teach Bible study. Um, I mean, my master's degree is in nutrition. It has nothing to do with theology or spirituality or anything. And the Lord just kept saying to my heart over the you know, next month, he's like, I, 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 don't qual I don't call the qualified. I qualify the called. And the deal is, is that you open your mouth and I will fill it. And so after a lot of prayer and just a lot of support from the church and from people in the community, I, I got up the courage and I started a Bible study. And it was something that just kind of snowballed and I taught it for a good five years and it was the biggest blessing in my life. And it, it was just amazing because it was, it was more real to me than anything else because it was a real person in the real world living out real faith with the doubts and the mountains and the valleys all sprinkled, you know, in the midst of the amazing God moments and, and things in my life. So that's kind of where it started with the go. And then my life kind of took a different transition. Um, I was very blessed to have a, have a four-year-old little girl. She was two at the time, and I had a high-risk pregnancy with my twins. And it had just gotten to a point where God's like, okay, I think it's time for you to take a break. And so I stopped teaching Bible study. I had been teaching Sunday school, um, stopped teaching. I stopped serving on the committees and all that stuff and just kind of devoted that time to my family. And so that was going, I still kept Bible study, but it was more of a private thing at home by myself. And then last fall, um, the twins had turned one and Julia was now three and I just kind of started to feel unsettled and okay Lord wh Where do you want me to go? What do you want me to do here now? And I didn't want to just pick up where I left off because I figured you know what if it's from me It's really not where he wants me to be. I'm just gonna have to be patient and listen And I got a call from Derek and he said I've got a question to ask you and it was when faith link was changing over to the 930 service and his Sunday school class, the Life Speak class, was without a teacher. And he said, I would really like you to consider to do it. And the, for my first thought was, you've got to be kidding me. Like, that is the biggest shoes to fill um, that I could imagine. And I was just like, wow, I will pray about it. And definitely, I mean, I was excited, but then of course there was that, that fear of, I'm not gonna be good enough. I, I don't know enough to be able um, to teach this class and to do things the way that I would want to do it by filling his shoes. And I prayed about it and thought about it and God just said, you know what? Do you not remember our deal? Open your mouth wide and I will fill it. And so I decided I took the leap of faith and it's been the biggest blessing and it's been a challenge. Um, and it's a different challenge now because now I at least know a little bit more about the Bible and I've been in it for, you know, nine years and I kind of have a little bit of wisdom to draw from. Um, but now it's more of the challenge of time and the busyness of having a four-year-old and two-year-old twins and working full time and building a house and moving. You know, I really don't have the time to do it, but I think about the quote that Mark, you said many years ago and I say to myself all the time, you know, if you're too busy, 
for God, then you're way busier than he ever intended for you to be. And it speaks to me now in a different way that if I'm too busy to fill out my purpose, then I'm way busier than God ever intended me to be. And so I have to do a sacrifice of my me time and my time that I would like to have to myself to do whatever I please. And the Lord says, no, you need to go. You need to do what I want you to do. And it's, it's challenging and it's hard because I feel like I fail at it daily. I feel like I'm still a hot mess in many ways, but it's amazing how he gives me the strength and he just simply reminds me, sometimes in a whisper and sometimes in the bullhorn, go. Um, I grew up in the church. I actually grew up um, in South Louisiana. I'm a Cajun Catholic girl. And um, I, I honestly, you know, in my college years and in graduate school, kind of just drifted a little bit and just didn't really have that personal relationship and had never studied the Bible. And I was at a very, very hard part of my life that I went through. And finally, it just, I hit rock bottom. And sometimes you hit, you know, I hit that rock bottom and I looked up and said, okay, Lord, you know, I had said to myself all this time, you know, people had said, well, maybe you need to get back to church or maybe you need to go to God. And I was like, we're not talking right now. I am very upset with him. And when I get my stuff together, then we will talk and I will deal with him. And of course, that's very comical now to think of myself and the arrogance and the, the pride and just the ridiculousness of that statement. But it took me just one day I had this revelation and it said, you know what, you need to find a new church and you, you need to find somewhere that you can grow and and um, I was dating Keith at the time, and he said, you know, why don't we try First Methodist? And I walked in, um, and it was like I was home. And I was, my faith, you know, jar was so low at that point, but it was just, I think it was a way for God to put me at that point so that he could fill me up and that he can say, look, I know you've been going through a hard time, and I know you've had your doubts and your issues and things, but that's okay. You can come as you are, and we're going to work on that. And it was just amazing how we started, you know, that journey all together. And our young adult, which I don't consider myself a young adult anymore. It's kind of funny. I'm like, hmm. Um, but we started that journey with Visioneering by Andy Stanley. And it's just amazing what God has done because when I first stepped foot in this church, I was empty and I was lost. And I didn't know. I knew one Bible verse in my entire life that I had memorized. And it was just he took that desperate state that I was in and just made me so thirsty. And it that's just kind of how it all grew. So it's funny when we were talking about doing the series, looking back on it, and I was like, it's just, it's amazing. And it, like I said, if you told me, I wouldn't, I would never have believed you, ever. I think I would tell someone who feels inadequate for the calling that they've heard from God is to pray about it and to know that God will use you exactly where you are. You don't have to arrive, or you're never going to be that perfect person that he's going to use. And you don't have to be on a church staff or a missionary or quit your job and go live, you know, in a impoverished neighbor, impoverished neighborhood. You don't have to do all those big things. Sometimes fulfilling that calling is just surrendering and just obeying. And I really think that if you feel inadequate for your calling, then it probably really is from God. Because if you could do it on your own, you wouldn't need him. And I think that he does that on purpose because we have to rely on him. Because there's, if you can't do it on your own, then his glory shines. And you don't, it doesn't become about you, it becomes about him. And before you do your calling, whatever it is, you pray, use me, Lord, because I can't do this by myself. And that's what he wants, because if we're doing it for us, then we may not be in line of where he wants us to be. Absolutely. Absolutely. I've doubted it many times. And I've just been, Lord, seriously, with all the mistakes that I've made, and how in the world could you still use me? I mean, it still baffles me to think that I would teach people. Um, I mean, yes, I have, the, I have the, the loud mouth to be able to do it, but I don't feel that I have the, the great knowledge or wisdom always to be able to teach people. But God, whenever I get in that doubting phase, you know, he says, you know what? It's okay, because even all those mistakes that you've made, I can use that. 
And you know, now that you've asked me that question, looking back on the huge and the little mistakes that I've made, you know, God has used all of that for His glory because I've been able to draw from those experiences and those mistakes and be able to minister to other people and say, you know what? I've been there. Like, I know what it is to screw up royally. I know what it is to doubt and be like, how could you ever use me after I have doubted this much? How can you ever use my life after what I've, I've gone through? But it just never ceases to amaze me that he's like, you know what? That's just going to make it better. That's just going to make it richer because you aren't perfect and you never are going to be. And I'm going to use all those imperfections in you to show maybe that person who's doubting and saying, well, there's no way he could use me because I have to fit into that mold. There is no mold. God can use anybody in any part of your life, any mistakes that you've made. He can use it. That's a tough question because there's so many. There are so many, but, and this isn't a specific Bible, like, person, but the Israelites in the desert, because, and it's, it, it frustrates me because I, I look at the amazing things that they saw, and all the plagues, and Moses, and parting the Red Sea, and I get envious of that. They were, God was with them, and the, with the, you know, the pillar of cloud by day, and the pillar of, you know, the fire at night, and that he was with them, and he, he gave them manna every day, and it inspires me so much, and I, I love that they heard from him. But in the same way, I see myself so much in them because even though they've seen the amazing things that God have done, God did in their lives, they still doubted, and they still were wayward, but yet they came back. And the fact that God always said, you know what? You have, you've done it again, but it's okay. You can come home. You can come back. And so I find inspiration in that, that when I wander and when I, you know, don't always follow the path that God has, has drawn for me, that he's still there. And another part of that story that inspires me is the manna. It's that he gave them the manna daily. That's all that they could gather. And it reminds me of, and again, it goes, you know, that my life first is Psalm 8110. For I'm the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt. Open your mouth wide and I will fill it. And I learned many, many years later from that verse, you know, at first it was just, okay, you're going to talk and I'm, you're going to teach and I'm going to talk through you. But it became, I will fill you, I will give you your daily bread. I am your manna. You need to get your daily sustenance from me, not from the world, not from family, not from your job, not from any of those things, but I am your manna. Open your mouth wide, seek me, and I promise you, I will feed you and I will sustain you, but you have to come out and seek me every day because you can't just gather a whole bunch and it'll get you through the week. It has to be a daily thing. And it, again, the reason why I identify with them so much is because you look at them and you go, you are so, forgive my word, you are so stupid. How can you doubt God after what you have seen him? He is with you all the time. He has guided you, he has rescued you, he has done miracles that you have seen with your own eyes, you have felt, and yet you're gonna doubt him. And then God says, um, Carla, hello. <laughs> How could you doubt my timing, my answers to prayers, when you've seen what I've done in your life? And when I'm with you, maybe not in a, a pillar of cloud and a fire at night, but I'm with you through the Holy Spirit every day, just like I was the Israelites. And so I identify with them a lot. And the more I read about them, the more I'm like, okay. As far as looking into the future, it's, it's very exciting because I know now, having and gone through so much with God, I know that whatever it brings, He's going to be with me, and it's all going to be okay. It's not going to be easy. I mean, I know that. I mean, the Bible tells us, and I've, of course, experienced it, that it's never going to be smooth sailing. No matter how much faith you have, no matter how many, you know, things you accomplish, it's never going to be smooth. But I think that what I've learned through our community and through going through trials and tribulations is that He will be with us. And when we pass through the waters, He's going to be with us. When we walk through the fire, we will not be burned. And knowing that we have those people who the power of prayer and experience it in the past couple years and knowing that even though the future can be scary in terms of, you know, what's going to happen in our country and what's going to happen with our families and, you know, 
every day you hear of someone getting, you know, sick and losing someone they love. And of course, being a mother, the fear of, you know, protection over my family and my children. But whenever I get apprehensive, I just think, you know what? God's like, I got this. Don't worry. I need you to enjoy today. I need you to live out your calling and I'm going to take care of all of it. And even if you experience tragedy and, and bad things happen, that's okay because I, it, I've got this. I know what I'm doing and my timing and my strength and my, it's bigger than anything you may encounter. And so I have to remind myself of that anytime I try to get anxious and just live out today and be thankful for what we have and not worry so much about what the future brings because it's, it's God's going to, he's already taken care of it. He knows what's going to happen.